I'm going to go over how to take a texture from Photoshop and save it into a format that allows Illustrator to give it a transparent background as well as it lets you change the color of the texture itself. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this video, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments section. And if you're looking to buy some textures, uh, check out the description for links. So let's just dive right in and get started. Once you have your file and Illustrator set up and ready, and you know you're ready to start adding in your texture, and, and just for reference, I made the, the file size of my Illustrator canvas as well as the canvas in my Photoshop the same just so that when I export uh, the, the texture out of Photoshop and bring it into Illustrator I can perfectly align it with the artboard. Uh, you could also do things like if you want to just copy and paste like copy and paste from Illustrator and drop them right into Photoshop here and then make a texture over it and then when you're ready to export the texture just turn that off or delete it. That'll work too. Uh, that's a nice way to kind of know exactly how things are going to look before you export them so there's not so much trial and error. But I'm going to mainly focus on how to actually save these files so that Illustrator can kind of properly use them and give them transparent backgrounds. I have two different textures here. Uh, one that's a very stark black and white and then this one right here which is a watercolor texture. I have these two different styles because there's two slightly different settings that you can use. Um, one that favors stark black and white and one that will give you a little bit more detail. So let's just dive right in with the watercolor texture and do this one first. So once your texture is ready you just gotta go to image and then mode and then convert it to grayscale. It's gonna say this is gonna affect the appearance just hit merge that's fine and it's also gonna convert it into black and white. Now uh, that's something to note. You won't be able to maintain all these crazy colors in Illustrator, but you will be able to select one overall color. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. But for now, just discard. We're going to have to go right back up to Image, and then Mode, and this time Bitmap. It's going to say, do you want to flatten layers? Go ahead and do that. Uh, for output, I have this at 300 pixels per inch. Uh, that's a pretty good just general use uh, resolution. But if you want the highest quality possible, uh, try 600. It'll give you a little bit sharper edges. Uh, if you're working on certain types of files, that might be noticeable. Uh, just something to think about. And for method, this is why I have two different texture files, because the main two different methods we'll use are 50% threshold and diffusion dither. Uh, basically what 50% threshold does is it takes anything that's, uh, you know, if you think in terms of transparency, less than 50% black it'll make it pure white and if it's more than 50% black it'll make it a solid pure black um, so if I run 50% threshold quickly on this for example you can see it doesn't look like our original texture anymore it's very harsh uh, areas of black and white it just fills it all in that works awesome for textures like this one but not so much for textures like this so for your more complicated textures just go to image and then mode and then bitmap, flatten the layers, and we're going to select diffusion dither. And I just ran diffusion dither on this, and as you can see from a distance, it still looks extraordinarily similar to our starting point. As you zoom in though, you'll notice that it still is a series of very harsh black and white, but it dithers it out so it actually has a semblance of the original texture here. It still looks a lot closer. And the next step we're going to do to get this ready to bring into Illustrator, we're going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to name it whatever we want under File Name. I'm just going to leave it Texture. And under Format, near the bottom here, I'm going to select TIFF. So I selected TIFF, I named it, and I'm just going to hit Save. Uh, as far as image compression goes, if you want to keep the file smaller, you can go ahead and do that, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to me. So I'm just going to hit OK. And there we have it. The TIFF is ready to go. I'm just going to jump into Illustrator here. Um, and here's our working file, a blue background with just some white text on it. And I'm going to lock the text layer and the background layer so when I bring the texture in I won't accidentally select them. And if you don't have your layers palette available, it's just under Window and then Layers near the middle here. Um, also notice I have like the background, the text, and then a texture layer on separate layers. It's just a nice way to work if you don't work that way already. Keeping things separate so you can lock things as you need to or individually adjust things and select them a little bit easier. It might save you some time in the long run. But to place the texture, just go to File, 
and then place. Make sure where it's looking is the folder or your desktop where you save the texture and select the texture.tiff file and then just hit place. As you can see there, here's our texture. It has a transparent background automatically. Anything that's white in Photoshop will automatically be converted over to a transparent background when you save them this way. But we're not going to want the actual texture to be this black color. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either hit I for the eyedropper or select it in your toolbar over here. But I'm just going to hit I and I'm just going to drop over the background color which will turn my texture the same blue as the background. And that's how I, I personally tend to work most of the time is I just have the texture mac match the background. But you can also go over here to the fill, just double click it and select whatever color you want. Oop, make sure the texture is selected. And it will automatically convert that for you. Um, makes it pretty easy. And then when you're done, you can just lock this texture. So if you want to go back in and double click your text, you can do that really easily without the texture actually blocking it. I'm going to unlock this and delete it and actually go over to the second texture I did. And as you can see if I zoom in on this texture, it's very very harsh black and white with, you know, pretty pretty crisp edges. There's a little bit of a gradation going on, but very very little. And this is where the 50% threshold method makes a whole lot more sense and will actually look a bit better. So this time I'm going to go to image mode and once again convert it to grayscale, just hitting discard for the color. And I'm also going to go back to image, mode, and then bitmap. I'm going to leave it at 300 uh, ppi. And I'm going to change the method this time to 50% threshold. And I'm just going to hit OK. And there it goes. And as you can see, this time it looks almost identical to our starting point, which is kind of a nice plus when you're working with really simple textures like this. Uh, when you run a 50% threshold, it'll look almost identical. So we're ready to go to File save as, uh, name it whatever you want, and once again just change the format near the bottom here to TIFF. And I'm going to hit save, I'm going to disregard compressing it, you know, feel free to do so if it's important. And I'm going to jump back on over, and once again to drop that texture in here, and alternatively you can uh, just take the folder and drag the texture right in, uh, but if you prefer to do it this way, you can go to file, place, and once again just select that texture, drop it in there, and since I made both the, the document canvas sizes the exact same, this fits perfectly in the canvas size for the Illustrator, and I can once again you know, hit I and select that background, and this looks pretty good as it is, or I can select that again and go all the way over to the fill and make it whatever color I want, in this case white. So that's kind of a nice brief overview on how to save textures and bring them into Illustrator. Uh, something to note, these textures won't be rest, I mean, they won't be vector. So always try to get your Illustrator file to the, the final size that you want to use it before dropping these textures in. Uh, this method is really awesome if you want to output things like t-shirts and the like, where it's really, really easy to separate in Illustrator. And you want a little bit more complex sort of texture where Photoshop you know might be the right tool to do that for you and if you found this video helpful you know please hit like and subscribe and leave any comments you have in the comments section thanks for watching